lighter and physically feel so much better. I have so much more energy. I found that my skin is a lot clearer and um, my hair is in better condition and shinier. I would eat fruit, vegetables, uh, nuts, seeds, beans, legumes, uh, eat a lot of lentils and uh, quinoa um, and a variety of beans. Also, uh, I take vitamin B12, not that I don't take eggs anymore. Um, but also there's herbs, spices, uh, I take spirulina. Okay, let's go enjoy it. I'll get Noah. Great. <clears throat> but anyway, getting oh, he picked these up yesterday, the kale crunch is yeah. Campbell. And it's a book which uh, really regards a plant-based diet and all its benefits. And I've just turned this page and he's referenced Rachel Carson, who I was actually named after. My full name is Rachel Carson Pilkington. She wrote many books, but one of them was called Silent Spring. And it talked about how much we're negatively impacting the environment. Uh, she received substantial backing from the Kennedy administration at the time. And as a result of that, it gave rise to the modern day environmental movement as we know it. Agrochemicals, climate change and habitat loss are having a detrimental impact on our native flora and fauna. Any threat to them is obviously a threat to our bees and if the survival of the pollinators, our bees, is threatened, our survival is threatened. I try as much as possible to only use skincare products that are free from parabens and aluminium. We don't even realise how much we're polluting our own bodies with half of these toxic chemicals. I believe every tiny, seemingly insignificant creature has its own function and purpose and just because we may lack the understanding or insight into what that purpose might be, that doesn't give us the right to interfere with their lives or to inflict harm on them. It's part of nature's grand design that we all evolve and change. In fact, our very survival depends on our ability and willingness to adapt to change. But nothing is more important right now than the changes we need to make to ensure the survival of the very planet we're standing on. Well done, the right hope. I'm joined now by from the organisation Go Vegan World and Oliver Dunn, who owns a number of restaurants. Oliver, come to you first. I think the point that Rachel made there at the end might be the one that makes mo most sense to somebody like you, who likes meat, who doesn't see a problem with eating animals, that this is about the environment. But really it's time for us to grow up and realise the harm that we're doing. What do you say to that point? Um, I suppose there's, there's two arguments to us. Um, yes, the, the, the claim is that livestock and the production of livestock and everything around livestock um, has a negative effect on greenhouse gases and CO2 emissions and methane release. And it has global warming effects increase. And, and I think, if I'm not right in saying, it's about 5% of the overall global warming. But the flip side of that is as well, the consumption of meat gives an awful lot of pleasure in life. You know, it, it releases endorphins. It's something that people enjoy. I see it day in, day out, on a daily basis. You know, people are genuinely happy and express outward of, oh, God, that was amazing. We're eating meat. And, and, and I think in a, in a world where mental illness is growing, depression is growing, all these things are growing, I think these little pleasures in life and enjoyment should be harnessed, you know. That's like what causes all that shite. It's harmless, though. Because for somebody like Rachel, I'm sure Sandra would agree, it's not harmless. Yeah, so there, there's absolutely two sides, you know, and, and vegans, I completely 100% respect, I, I, their opinion I 100% respect, but it is very much so their opinion. Um, and their opinion, it's not harm to them, and they would take great offence, I'm sure, on a lot of things, a lot of people eating meat. Um, me, personally, I don't. Um, I, as I said, I, I love eating meat. Since humans roamed this earth millions of years ago, we've been eating meat. Okay, so Sandra, it's a live and let live thing for Oliver. He respects what you do, and he feels that you should do the same with him and his practices when it comes to eating meat. It's not about respecting me as a vegan. It's about respecting the life of somebody who feels like me. Someone who's capable of the same physical feelings that I have. So when you say somebody, you're referring to animals? I'm referring to other animals. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I get lots of pleasure from what I eat. I get maybe a lot more pleasure now than I did when I used to eat in restaurants like yours, as I did very frequently prior to being vegan. And... The idea that my pleasure or my taste or anybody's ple pleasure or taste is worth more than the entire life 
of somebody else is is ludicrous and it's immoral and I can understand that you don't feel like that because there was a time when I didn't feel like that but I run a sanctuary in County Meath and when I first started that sanctuary I wasn't vegan and I got to know the individuals who came to me and I realised that again the individuals you're referring to the animals, animals. yeah I, I, I saw that they on a very simple level, they had two eyes, a nose and a mouth, the same as me. I started to realise they had skin, they had sense organs, the same as me. They had the same internal organs as me. And I saw that when they were hurt, they could feel physical pain and they could feel pleasure, psychological states of pleasure and joy. And when you see a lamb jumping on his four legs simultaneously, that's joy. When you see them running up and down the fields, chasing each other, or you see a mother licking her, her child, that's their pleasure. And how can our single taste of a quickly forgotten meal, how can that be more important than their whole life? Okay, well, Oliver, give me your take on that. Animals have feelings just like, yeah, just like us. Like, I, I find the use of language very interesting. Um, and in the marketing campaigns, all vegan campaigns, you always use clever photography as well, where referring to animals as pretty much like humans, even giving them names like Charlotte and Mary and Johnny and, and photographs used, they'd show like photographs of nearly animals with facial expressions, like human facial expressions, and they play and pull on the heartstrings of people. So you don't accept they have feelings? Trying to force their message home. Of course animals have feelings. I'm, I'm sure, some animals, I'm sure, have feelings. And then regardless, if you went to then fish, you could debate, and there is a, an ongoing back and forth debate from science around the world that fish don't have feelings and don't have the neuropsychological capabilities to feel pain. So, you know, but it's all protein, it's all, it's all part of the vegan thing. So there's two okay. sides to the story, but I think it's, it's, it's clever packaging to drive your point on. All right, who would like to get involved in our audience? Raise, raise your hands there. Yes, we might come to the gentleman right in the centre in the suit and tie and then we'll move on from there. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Uh, Cormac Healy from Meat Industry Ireland. Um, I suppose just say it, it is about choice. Uh, thankfully, from the perspective from which I come personally and for the sector I work in, we're very glad that the choice of the overwhelming population in the world is to include animal protein in their diet. In terms of the, 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 the welfare issues, I, I mean, I think we have to just make a number of points. We operate to very high standards of welfare. Farmers know more than anyone about the care of animals. They're excellent in so doing. And to suggest that there's otherwise is to, is to impugn their integrity. In terms of the climate as well, <laughs> agriculture has a role in climate change. There's no question about that. But our production systems, our livestock production systems in Ireland, are amongst the, the, the most sustainable in the globe. We are grass-based. We have the lowest carbon footprint in terms of our meat and dairy products. And we don't rest there. We are continuing to work okay. to improve efficiency. So, All right. On you. the side, you there? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we need to clear up this climate issue. You, you quoted a figure of 5% of the impact of, of animal products. It's actually a fucking fifth to me. In, in terms of global climate change, the figure is at least 14%, and that's the lowest estimate. Um, so we need, we need to make that clear. And in Ireland, it's 32%, according to the last figures, the EPA figures. Are you vegan yourself? I, I maintain a, a plant-based diet, yes. And... So that, that's the first thing. We also need to, to address the, the argument that Ireland has this very clean, pure agriculture that doesn't emit uh, like other countries. We do. It's a bit like comparing Polish coal to English coal. They're, 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 it's it's a, just a fundamentally emission-heavy product. You can't get away from that. And the actual, if you look at the statistics, Ireland does not do that well against other countries because we have a grass system okay. and grass-based production actually has higher methane emissions. All right, and John else. Comer is here as well uh, beside you there. John, what do you say to that, that it's just a, 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 it's an industry that takes a heavy toll on the environment? Yeah, it looks like tonight, Claire, I'm the meat and the sandwich between two vegans. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I would like to address, I would like to address the point that you raised at the very intro, uh, that farmers are worried about the growing veganism. No, the industry is, is, is on the planet for a long time and it will be going forward. It's a, it's a healthy industry uh, with the highest standards 
Bullshit. that farmers accept and maintain in order to have consumers uh, enjoy a fine, tasty product and a very nutritious product. It's, but, it's but, taken as a not going in popularity. It's illegal it's to say it in America that it's nutritious. Value, but what I am extremely concerned about is, you know, the fact that there's some sort of ethical equivalence between humans and, and animals, I think is just wrong. It's misleading. Uh, there is... Uh, How do you know? Well, that would be my interpretation because uh, I don't think that you can compare a human to a chicken. At least I wouldn't like to bring my children up thinking that they're, 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 there's an equivalence uh, of, of, of standards between the two of us. But the point I would like to make, and very forcibly tonight, is that there would be a lot of potentially teenage children watching this program tonight uh, that might get notions that they can do without uh, a rich source of because they can and a rich source of calcium coming from the milk. Okay, well, so maybe some of our beacons might explain to us how you manage that, particularly when it comes uh, to children and, and a balanced diet. Yeah, we've a raised hand here, a gentleman with the beard. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, no, I was just saying, um, I, I don't think anyone's kind of equating humans and chickens together. It's just you have to look at the similarities, and the similarities are that, um, as, sorry, Sandra. And, uh, as Sandra said, um, like animals do feel pain, they do suffer, uh, they do think. And any, I mean, anyone who has a dog knows that their dog is different than another dog. So um, it's not about saying humans and chickens are the same you just kind of have to um see that you kind of have to question whether the the big mac is worth it when these animals do feel pain and they do suffer what about what john says though the importance of maintaining a healthy diet and when you take everything out oh, that I veganism mean, requires you to take out are you still going to be healthy there's there's protein in every single food in the world every single food in the world is protein in it you can't not get enough protein, it's impossible. Okay. Yeah. A bag of broccoli. Sorry, John, yeah, go ahead. I see you would need a 50 kilo bag of broccoli to get enough protein uh, or iron from the broccoli that you would get from a small, small sliver of, of, of 